Hi everyone! Welcome or welcome back to this Intro to Seaborn series. Today we're talking about the Seaborn Facet Grid. Seaborn's Facet Grid serves as the backbone for its cat plot, rel plot, and the brand new disc plot. So I'm really excited to show you what the Facet Grid can do. The main idea behind the Facet Grid is that we'll be creating what are called small multiples. This just means that we'll pick out a categorical feature in our data and then create one plot for each and every category. And we're going to be able to do all of this with just a few lines of code. One of the first examples of small multiples was created by Edward Mybridge to show how a horse gallops. Contributing to the foundation of motion pictures, Mybridge's work is actually a collection of several different photographs. Today's small multiples still consist of many different figures, for example, the market share for company A, B, and C. This allows us to compare trends across various different categories. Now that we know about small multiples, let's check out the Seaborn code. Taking a look at a little bit of Seaborn code, I'm first just going to import the Seaborn library as well as the PyPlot module. And then today we're going to be looking at some data about penguins, and so this data comes from the Seaborn library. And I'll set my styling to be white as well. So now we're ready to create our first facet grid. To do that, I'm going to reference the Seaborn library and then type in facet grid. So note that the syntax looks a little bit different here. We do have capital letters on that facet grid. So that is something that is a little bit different than some of the other functions that we've looked at for Seaborn. The next thing I need to supply is the data frame that I would like to plot. So I'm going to use the penguins data frame. All right, so nothing super exciting yet. We basically just have blank X and Y axes ready to put some data on here. But the first thing I want to show you about the facet grid is the idea of small multiples. So what I can also do is either supply a row or column dimension or both. Let's check these out. So let's say I wanted to supply this column dimension and say that I'm going to break up my small multiples by the island that the penguins live on. So Seaborn has created three separate subplots, one for each island that it found in the island column. There are three different islands, and so we have three different plots. And one thing to note here about the syntax, because I used the call argument, what that's saying is I want one column for each of those islands. Another defining feature of the facet grid, this is actually going to return an object. So let's save that as G. If we check the type of G, we are going to have a facet grid. This is super important because we're actually going to be using methods of that facet grid object in order to show data in each of these plots. One more thing to show you before we do that, I used column here, so I had one different column for each of the islands, but of course you can also use rows. So let's try that as well. Now I should have three rows of figures because I have three different islands. So that's also possible and you can also combine rows and columns if you have multiple different categories you want to split out on. So now that we have our facet grid set up, we can move on to step two, which is to map some plots onto these axes. So let's do that now. We have G saved, so G is our facet grid that we just created. Now all we need to do to add some plots is to use map. So the first thing I need to supply to map is actually which kind of figure would I like to create. So here, let's actually create hist plots on each of these figures. Okay, so I'm going to create a hist plot. Then I also need to say which column of the penguin's data frame am I interested in. So the hist plot only requires one dimension. So let's do the flipper length of these penguins. Awesome, so here we go. We have one hist plot for each of those three different islands. So what Seaborn is doing is actually grouping up all of our data by each of the islands and then creating a hist plot for each of those groups. So that's pretty cool. We're able to build all of those small multiples with just a couple lines of code. The facet grid object also has another method called map data frame, and this is just a little bit different, but accomplishes similar things to map. So let's try this one also. Again, we need to pass in what kind of figure we're trying to make. For us, it'll be a hist plot, and we need to supply what column from the penguins data frame are we interested in. So for us, flipper length. All right, so it looks like it does the exact same thing as map, but it's slightly different. One of the big differences here is that map data frame allows for named variable arguments. So we could say x equals flipper length, or even that y equals flipper length. So map data frame allows us to name those arguments as we go. 
Map, however, would actually give you an error here. It requires positional arguments. So if I tried to say x equals flipper length, I'm going to get a big old error. Map does not allow that, whereas map data frame does. Besides creating those small multiples for you, the other cool thing about Facet Grid is that you can actually pass in whatever kind of plot you'd like here. So let's try a different one. How about scatter plot? And so a scatter plot is actually going to require two different arguments, both an X and a Y. So let's do that. Again, I'm just referring to the column names of that penguin's data frame. So there's one called Coleman depth, and there's another one called Coleman length. So this is the other really cool thing about the facet grid. You can just alter what kind of figure you'd like, and that will be able to produce many, many different types of seaborne plots. There are three main steps to produce a facet grid with seaborne. First, you'll set up your facet grid by referencing the data and which categories will form each facet. Second, we'll need to specify what kind of plot is going to go on each facet. And the third and final step is to then customize your facet grid using methods and attributes of the facet grid. Let's check that out. We previously saw that the facet grid returns an object which we can save in a Python variable. So here I've called it G. And if we check the type of G, that is a Seaborn facet grid. This object comes with many different methods and properties, and you can take a look at these by typing G dot and hitting tab. So there's lots and lots of things that you can do with this facet grid, and we're going to be continuing on styling by using some of these methods. So let's check this one out first. We can set the axes labels through this method called set axes labels. And this method just accepts string values, whatever you'd like to title that x axis and whatever you'd like to title the y axis. And as we see, those labels are then applied to the x and y axes. And we will see that x axis label repeated for each of those small multiples. Seaborn will try its best to title those small multiples appropriately. For example, we have the various different islands, and Seaborn will say island equals dream or bisco, etc. But if you'd like a different title for these small multiples, you can pass in a title template. So let's try that. Again, I'll just reference that facet grid object, and I'll use this method called set titles. Now, since I want to change what the template looks like for the columns, I will reference the call template. And the reason why I keep calling this a template will become apparent in just a moment. So let's actually work through this first. I'm going to reference the column name and then write the word island. Let's see what this does. All right, so for each of these different small multiples, I do have the string island, but this call name, because it's specified in these two curly braces and because I've used this keyword column name, I actually see the name of each island showing up there. So this is a really nice way to style those titles and still be able to pull in the name of each of those different islands. And those are again coming from the categories of this island column, which is what we based our facet grid on. And you'll also see that I can just continue styling this facet grid however I'd like. First I've added the plots, and then I set the axes labels, I set the title templates, etc. And I can just continue with this until I'm satisfied with the facet grid. We also previously saw that you could instead specify a row dimension for your facet grid. And actually you can specify both a column and a row dimension. So let's actually also put the species on the row. Awesome, so now going across each of the columns represent the various different islands, but each of the rows specify the various different species of penguins, this last one being Gentoo, and that goes across each of those different islands. And some of these plots are blank because in this data set, we don't have any Gen 2 penguins from Dream Island, for example. So this is pretty cool. With the facet grid, we can get one small multiple plot for every single island species combination. And just like with those column templates for the titles, you can also set a row template. And let's do this one as the row name. All right, great. So we have the penguin species and the island for every single small multiple in our facet grid. So there's a couple of additional attributes that you can set directly within the facet grid call. So let's try a couple of these. One thing to notice, each of these plots right now is sharing this one Y axis. If you'd like to have a separate axis for each of your figures, you can just set share Y equal to false. 
so now each plot has its own axes. But one thing to caution you here, this could potentially change the y limits for each of those plots. So notice how each different facet has its own range for the y. And that can be kind of confusing for comparative purposes among these different islands. So let's actually set our y limit, and you can do that right here within the facet grid. And once we do that, all three of these plots will now share this 20 to 70 y limit. Seaborn's facet grid is highly customizable. You can use hue to specify other categories in your data, as well as many, many other styling options, including custom functions. Let's check it out. Like many other plots, we can use hue to show off one more categorical variable within the facet grid. You may think that you should pass hue here to the map data frame method, but there's an issue with this. What happens if you pass in hue here, Seaborn will actually create these hues based on the individual figures. And what you'd probably like to have is a hue based on the overall facet grid. And just to clarify this a little bit further, we could actually add a legend here and you'll see that we have some issues. So you can see from this legend, we definitely have some issues. Adili penguins are in blue, but then Gen 2 and Chinstrap are in orange, and it's very confusing, right? So the problem is where we've placed this hue argument. It actually should go up at the facet grid level. Now let's try it again. Awesome. Now we have Adili penguins in blue, Chinstrap penguins in orange, and Gen 2 in green, which is exactly what we want. Three different colors for our three different penguin species. So if you are going to use hue, you'll want to specify that within this facet grid function. You also, of course, have the option to change the various colors that are displayed here, and that's through this palette argument. So there's plenty of different palettes to choose from in Seaborn. Let's pick Prism, and there we go. You can style that however you'd like. The final option I want to show you is quite advanced, but it does really show off the power of this facet grid. So this section is all about adding your own custom functions to these facet grids, and I'm going to come back to this function in just a little bit. For now, let's take a look at this facet grid example. I've specified which quantity I want to plot, that's the body mass. I've created my facet grid based off of the penguins data, and I'm splitting that data up by sex and by species. So my two rows of data will be the male and female penguins, and then each column will be the various species of penguins. I've then mapped my plots onto this facet grid. Here I'm using the KDE plot, and I'm specifying the quantity of interest that I'd like to plot. Here that's the body mass. I also wanted to point out that you can again style these however you'd like, and any of these keywords you pass here are going to be going to the individual plots themselves. So I can turn on shading for the KDE or make that line width a little bit darker. Those keyword arguments are going to be specific to whichever kind of plot you're displaying on this facet grid. Then I've also added a title template. All my rows are going to have the row names, and my columns are going to have the column name and then the word penguins. The way that custom functions come into play here, we can actually add, let's add it right here, one more line that will be mapping the data frame. And this map data frame method actually accepts any kind of function you'd like as long as that function has a data argument. So I'm going to use my own custom function at this point. If I take a look at my custom function, here's what it does. It has a data argument that's required. It also wants a keyword argument called var, so that's going to be the variable of interest. If the variable isn't provided, I'll just skip this step, but if the variable is provided, but I'm going to compute the mean of the body mass here, I'll grab my current axes, whichever facet I'm working on at that point, and I'm going to be adding a line at the mean value, a vertical line right at the mean. And in this final step, I'm just going to be annotating the mean for that particular group of data. All right, so let's try it out. That function is called add mean line, and it's a function I created myself. It takes in the data argument, and that data is coming from however I set my facet grid up. So it's going to be passing in the penguins data. The other thing that this function needs is a variable, so the var argument here, and that's just going to be our quantity of interest. That's just the body mass. All right, let's see what it does. 
Cool, so for each of these different facets, we added a little line indicating what the mean is for that particular data. And I'm also annotating the mean of the male Adelie penguins are gonna be 4,043 grams, etc. So this is super powerful. If you have specific things you'd like to do to these facets, you can absolutely do that in a customized way. You'll just wanna write those functions so that they take in a data argument and they can have other arguments as well. And the nice thing about how I've set up this function is I can actually change this quantity if I'd like. Let's say the Kalman length and see how that compares across species and across the penguin sex. So I hope you enjoyed learning all about the Seaborn Facet Grid. Like always, the code is available to you through my GitHub page. And like I mentioned in the beginning, the facet grid serves as the backbone for the cat plot, rel plot, and disc plot. So we'll be talking even more about the facet grid in those videos. See you then.